Hey everybody, it's Callus. It's Callus Crew Challenge, and it is the round of eight. I hope you've watched a lot of the round of 16 matches. They're here on YouTube, all of them. So if you've not done that, catch yourself up with a tournament and check them out. We are, like I said, kicking off the round of eight, and there are a lot of matches because everybody waits to play till the weekend. So I've got a lot of games coming your way today. We are going to start with the new gen highlights that I don't know how to narrate, starting with this match. It is Sabella on the bottom, PVRI money, or whatever, uh, against Empo on the top. Sabella is representing team The Rock Bottoms with Georgie and with Marco P. And then Empo is on team Shady Mofos with The Sprinkler and Fomog. Here we go. So... I'm just going to go to fast because we're not narrating properly. In fact, I'm going to go to hyper fast because this is just a highlight video. Don't you worry. Uh, I'm going to be going at a slower pace with gens that I like kind of sort of know how to narrate. But this isn't one of them. As you can see, this game one and this whole tour all the way through every tier every time is best of three. Just so we're clear about that and I don't have to keep repeating it. Uh, but this particular game I thought was pretty quick, if I recall correctly. Unfortunately, many of these games did happen while I was at work and unable to actually catch them live, so I only either caught glimpses of them or didn't catch them at all. Uh, but this one, like I said, pretty quick, pretty aggressive, not one of those 200-turn marathons that you see sometimes. 23 turns, Empo takes this one down. It was close for a while, it was 3-3. Three to three. It was close till it wasn't Empo with the Game 1 victory. Uh, and he is the expected heavy favorite here. But Sabella was also considered an underdog in the last round and won with a nice handy 2-0. So certainly not somebody to count out. But Empo considered one of the best to ever play SM. And according to our predictions, which again, have been not super accurate throughout the tournament. There's been a lot of upsets. But for what it's worth, which is probably a little to nothing... Our predictions think that Empo is going to get him. Here's the second game. Well, Empo's not going to get him that way. He's going to turn one, lose his Magurna, or whatever you pronounce that. Mage Arna. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Mage Arna. Talonflame. It's such a cool poke. I, I mean, I remember this turn. Even with the double boost... The supersonic sky strike does nothing. Does 42%. I wish rocks didn't affect, uh, weren't affected by typing so much. It's just it's so lame that a poke can take 50% from one entry hazard on the way in. That just feels super busted and half baked. But here we are. But yeah, this one pretty quick. Uh, was it the same turns both times? Yeah, 23 is the magic number. Takes 23 turns a game for Empo to dispatch of Sabella. I think that might be underselling Sabella a little bit as to how close these games actually were. 3-0 here with a couple things in rough shape, like the Mage Arna here at 2%. And then in this one, obviously, the Deancey's pretty low. This guy's at 88%. But yeah, I mean, both these games were relatively close. It felt like Empo was just one step ahead and never really got behind. And even though Sabella is performing well this tour, and is someone I would have confidence with moving forward should his team advance, uh, the expected outcome is what occurs. It is an Empo victory 2-0 over Sabella, and therefore Team Shady Mofos, like I said, Fomog and Sprinkler, are going to be up 1-0 in that series. Moving to a different series, we have Zokaru representing Team French, French plus Finch. That would be Finchinator, Teclas, and Zok against Machine Gun, Nico, which I guess is Machine Gun Kelly, I, I guess. Uh, anyhow, uh, he is on Numero Uno alongside X-Ray and Mikmer. Here's Game 1 in this series, which of course has moved over to Gen 8 now rather than Gen 7, which, bad news, I know even less about, so certainly going to be narrating on Hyperfast. Yeah, uh, this one, Nico, the expected winner here by a pretty good margin. He's a Gen 8 mainer who's had a couple of successful SPLs playing the tier in a row. Uh, Zokaru is known more as a GSC guy. He certainly dabbles and plays a little bit of everything. Uh, but this is not necessarily his best tier. 
I was on his SPL team, though. I know that he knows the tier. I know that he has a basic understanding and has teams and has gotten reps in this and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I don't think he's completely out of his element. He's just not supposed to beat a high-end SPLer who goes, you know, 6-3 twice or whatever, like Nico. So, we'll find out. Glad I'm not trying to narrate this, and I'm glad it's on Hyperfast, because I couldn't tell you who's supposed to win this matchup, or what's a threat here, or any of that. Looks pretty even to me, but I'm just the wrong guy. They both have rocks down, there's stuff beat up on both sides. Can never pronounce this mon, as I discovered the other day when I attempted to do so. Reuniclus, I guess. But it seems moderately threatening. I mean, it's also, well, just kidding. I was going to say it's also low health. It's also not in good shape. But I don't know. Just like looking at the coverage, right? Psychic and presumably Focus Blast can probably chunk all this stuff. But not anymore. Down to a 4-4. Four, four. I know that a lot of the top players don't think this mon is very good. This uh, Ur Shifu guy. Well, we'll never know. Uh, it's going to be a concession here. Machine Gun Nico. That's just Nico. Like I said, Team Numero Uno alongside X-Ray and Mikmer is going to take Game 1. That is the expected outcome. Uh, Zoc going to need two in a row. Here is Game 2. Uh, Nico's team looks a little different. Zoc's team looks remarkably similar to that of the previous game. Not identical, but... Very similar. I think it traded Slowbro, I don't even remember, for some other... Oh yeah, the stupid Urshifu guy that a lot of, like I said, a lot of the top players don't think is super good. Are the other five the same? They might be. My memory and my focus aren't good enough at this moment, but very similar. Zok is off to the lead in this one. Killing the Rotom there. And a little bit of a uh, little bit of banter going here. Really impressive that you avoided 18 burn chances in two games, says Nico. He's complaining even though he's winning. I mean, he may or may not be winning this game, but he's up a game. That's weird to me. I mean, I, I obviously you want to try to not get tilted with Mons in general. Easier said than done. We're all guilty of it. We've all gotten aggravated with the game and said stupid shit at one point or another. Uh, I haven't done it at this point in years, and I, like, really, really try to just keep it classy and not let the game bother me, and I'm pretty good at that in my advanced age these days. Uh, but the bigger picture point that I was making is that it's weird that he, Nico is seemingly tilting while he's winning. Usually people tilt when they lose because of bad luck, or when shit happens that results in them not winning, but, uh, and I guess he might not win this game, it's looking like, but, yeah, no, Nico was aggravated, like, early on in this game, when it was still anybody's game here, and when he's up 1-0, you definitely don't want to let yourself get tilted when you're winning. Yeah, no, there's some banter at the end of this one. You guys are going to have to check the log, but uh, Nico seems pretty tilty. He's complaining about a damage roll. He's saying this is funny. He's... Uh-huh. Zokru says I'm a banded man. Nico says you are not. He says it's still funny. Yeah, no, he's not, uh... Nico seems to be getting aggravated with this one, which... Is not is not where you want to be for Game 3. He might be a little tilty, and... I mean, your best chance to win Game 3 is to just play with a clear head and not let your emotions get to you, right? As Zakaru, I applaud for keeping his cool, not playing into it. He's not saying anything negative back or name calling or you know going to that level or whatever he's just letting his opponent be aggravated which is probably the play it might even piss him off more i don't know all right here's the third game zock on the bottom for the third time uh he really has a hard on for this uh cartana tornadus landerus core here he's brought all three of those in all three games man and Nico is getting bulldozed here. He's down two pokes before we even hit turn 10. He must be tilty. I mean, there's obviously some luck factors here, but he's got to be steaming. What is going on? Dominoes falling for Nico here. 
Magma Storm dodge. He's getting he's getting some breaks. He got confusion with Hurricane and attack yourself. He got a magma dodge, but Nopi's insta not okay with the crit. His Akru GG's at the end. Nico simply says no. Not a happy camper. This is the least close of the three, and I'm not really surprised. It, it felt it felt like Nico, for whatever reason, in this series was tilted from game one, like just tilted from the start and just not in the fucking mood. I don't know if he put a lot of pressure on himself because everyone thought that he was supposed to win this, but yeah, he just seemed not in the mood for this series. Maybe something in real life, who knows, but he seemed very irritable and quick to tilt in this one. Game one went his way, but he was already aggravated despite being up a game going into game two, and it only got worse from there. And maybe that partially factored in. Obviously, in-game stuff, luck, decisions, whatever. Obviously, a bigger factor. But perhaps that factored in more than zero to allowing Zokuru here to make a comeback and pull what is largely considered an upset victory. Zokuru now 2-0. Uh, Astamatitos and Oros in the first round. Might have been a surprise to some because, you know, it's Asta. He's such a big name. But it's, it's obviously not Asta's best tier. Uh, however, this match, you can't say too much about. This is Nico's best tier. He is a proven SS player with good tour results. And it's going to be Zoc taking him out anyway to get his team Fringe up to a 1-0 lead. He'll need either Finch or Teclis to finish the job. And they will advance to the semifinals. But in the meantime... We're going to move over here to the other side of the bracket. It is the lower bracket now. It is Team Let's In The Sun with Lax In The Sun, Teehee. Uh, teaming with Eloden and Tony Flagon, I guess he's just Tony now, against this team, Carapinga, which is Borja Carapinga, that's Solwind, and he's alongside Keenix and Bushtush for this one. They're playing Oras, which is a bit of an awkward tier for either guy, but... That's what the teams decided to do. They didn't have to do this. They made the choice. This is what they think is best. That's fine. Let's get into it. Same shit. Don't know how to narrate. Gonna put it on hyper fast. Let's see how the Oros plays out. Uh, looks like we have stall teams for both guys. Uh, except for like the Zam, which... It looks like a pretty big threat. Can punch through stuff here for sure. Shadow Ball, Psychic, Focus Blast coverage. Pretty big. Yeah, that looks like a pretty big threat, actually, for Lax's team. Ooh, a fresh taunt, too. Seems like an awkward matchup for Lax. This Heatran, I think, is going to totally shut down this Lati. The Toxic's annoying. The Taunt is annoying. It's, he's got the perfect set. Protect is good. You can prevent him from hitting Refresh or Recover or Roost or whatever Lati has for Recovery. But yeah, the Heatran seems like the perfect set to foil the Lati there. That being said, it is Lax with the early lead. Zam is going to miss a Focus Blast for Soul Wind, which could definitely, definitely matter here, potentially. Rapid Spin there blocked by Jelly. Interesting. There's some stuff that's pretty low already on both sides. Of note, uh, both the Drill and the Zam for Soul Wind on the low side right now. And one of these guys has rocks and one does not. Though a crit ice beam there matters. Certainly would have survived a non-critical hit there. We also see a static activation there with Iron Head. So a couple breaks there in a row for Soul Wind. Shadow Ball Roost respectively. Sure. Goes Mega. Shadow Balls again. 48%. Encore Roost. Basically giving him a bazillion chances to get a crit. Zam dies, but all of a sudden, Lax only has one poke. It's Lati against the world here now. And, oh, and I guess that'll be good enough. What a back-and-forth game. 4-1 to one advantage for Solwyn. Not going to be enough. He's going to pack it in. Cannot beat the Lati. Let's take a look as to why that is. Uh, the drill would come in, be outsped and killed. Uh, it's totally possible that the Toad can't touch him at all. Toxic EQ only, both of which with the Refresh and with Roost can just be negated. And then I have no clue who's faster between Zapdos and Lati. I would assume it's got to be the Lati because 
if Solwyn had a chance to go in there and crit Volt Switch or crit Hidden Power or whatever to to win, obviously you'd take that shot. So I guess the Lati must be faster. It's going to be Lax taking Game 1 for Team Let's in the Sun. Uh, Solwind with the clutch 2-0 victory over ABR in what must have been the highlight or one of the highlights of the previous round. He's now going to have to rattle off two in a row against Lax in order to give his team, Karapinga, a lead. It's not an elimination match just yet, though, because it is the first match in this series. There is a little bit of room, but still, obviously, you want to start off with a win. Here is game two. Lax in the sun on the bottom. And then Borja, Solwind on the top, representing Karapinga. Different teams for both guys. Interesting that they, by coincidence, have wound up with the same Mega. Also, both have a drill, which super common. But other than that, they've made very different choices. Wow, what a joke this game was. I feel like this happened to Lax in... In the previous round, am I cracking up? I think I am cracking up. Ignore that comment. I, I swear this happened to somebody earlier in the tour where they're just like, oops, I brought a team that can't handle X-Mon. Pack it up, pack it in. Uh, in this case, it is Excadrill that apparently Lax's team can't handle, and that is not a, te not a poke to be weak to in this tier. One of the most common and best pokes. Not something you just want to give away games to. So Lax, after the hard-fought comeback in Game 1, it's just going to take him 11 turns and probably 3 whole minutes in real time to throw away that lead and send us to a decisive Game 3. Lax and Solwind for the series lead right now. Switching the sides for continuity. Still Lax on the bottom, still Solwind on the top. They have different choices this time. The teams looked distinctly different, except for the Lando overlap, which is fine. Mega Pincer going on on the top. Don't see that guy too, too often. And Lati down is is huge. That's not so good for Lax. And Taunt is even going to prevent Rock's insult to injury here. Kyrem with a kill. Critical hit matters there, but Ironhead gets him anyway. Sucker Punch Volt Switch, sure. Volcarona trying to set up. There's a Quiver Dance and a sub. Stone Edge dodges so bad. Sub again. Crunch again. Bug Buzz for the kill. Flamethrower for the kill. Well, wow, that is remarkably similar to last game. Hard fought, grindy game one. Lax gets there. But an 11 turn game and a 14 turn game later. Solwyn takes him out just like that. The games that Solwyn won were curb stomps where Lax's team were just too shaky to common mons in Excadrill and Volcarona, respectively. Got to be taking some matchup fishy risks, evidently, and they did not pay off in this case. It's going to be Solwyn 2-0 in this tournament to the surprise of no one, one of the all-time greatest players and he's got his team, Karapinga, up 1-0. It's going to be either Bushtush or Keenix needing a victory to take them to the semifinals, whereas Lax is going to need both of his teammates, Aloden and Tony, to carry him through to the next round. And that's all I've got for you for now for new-gen highlights, but I have quite a bit of old-gen content that I'm going to be kind of sort of properly narrating. I put that in air quotes because... You know, stuff other than Gen 3. I don't know what the F I'm talking about, but I try to fake it. And those videos are going to be coming up. But in the meantime, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Comments, always welcome. Join the Discord server if you'd like. Link in the description. Donate if you'd like. No obligation, but it makes the tour even better. We are very close to hitting the beautiful four-figure mark in the very first edition of this tour, which would be a cool barrier to cross. I have enjoyed bringing these games to you, even though I don't know anything about these gens. And I hope you enjoyed watching. See you in the next video. Lots more to come.